Hello, brilliant entrepreneur, and welcome to another episode of the Heart Center Business Podcast. This is episode number 419, which means you can find all the relevant links and the show notes for today's episode over at tashcorbin.com forward slash 419. Today is the second podcast episode about the Heart Centered Business Conference 2024, including my recap and review of lessons and insights. So if you missed out on last week's episode. That was episode number 418. I'll have a link to that in the show notes of today's episode as well. So in last week's podcast episode, I went through what was one of the big take-home lessons that I learned from each of the speakers who presented at the Heart Center Business Conference. And in today's episode, what I want to do is go through what actually happened at conference, like some really cool observations of things that occurred at the Heart Center Business Conference, um, but also what the personal lessons I learned were from hosting conference um, and from, you know, just the conversations that were happening in the room and all the cool stuff that happened. So another little insight into conference and behind the scenes in my business. And this is going to be relevant if you are running events, both in-person and online events. But also there's a lot of business lessons and personal lessons that I think are going to resonate for quite a lot of people. So let's dive into this one. Hello, I'm Tash Corbin, a business strategist and mentor based on the Sunshine Coast in Australia. The mission of this podcast is to help heart-centered entrepreneurs to make more money and in doing so, change the world for the better. This podcast was recorded on the lands of the Gubby Gubby and Jinnabara people. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. I'm going to start with like dishing the dirt on some juicy goss of things that happened at conference and just things that I loved observing at the Heart Centre Business Conference this year. So um, one of the biggest ones for me was listening to Leonie Dawson speak on the second day of conference because um, I actually asked Leonie to speak very last minute for this conference. And that was because I was going through some health stuff for myself. And um, Leonie and I went to lunch, not even two weeks, I think, before conference. And she said to me, just sort of an off the hand kind of comment, you know, by the way, if you need me to run a workshop or do anything for conference, please just let me know. Like, I'm here to help. I'm here for you. And I ended up sending her a message that day and saying, you know what? Like, hearing you say that you would take over and do one of my workshops, because I was going to be doing a workshop on each day, um, it really, I felt this sense of relief. So I think it's the perfect thing for me to say yes to. So I actually handed over to Leonie to speak on stage at conference. And for conference speakers, I normally put up a slide that says like, here's the speaker coming and here's what they're going to be talking about, right? Because we organize all of that so far in advance. And the slide for Leonie literally said, welcome to the stage, Leonie Dawson, talking about whatever the F she wants, right? Because I was just like, Leonie, do whatever you want, do whatever you want. And boy, did she nail it. So Leonie ended up stepping on stage and rather than talking about business strategy and Uh, making jokes about ADHD and all the fun things that she loves to do in her business. And, you know, I've seen Leonie speak like that before. She spoke like that at 2023. She gave us a practical, very business-oriented workshop. I've seen her do that before. Leonie had this kind of insight that she needed to instead go back to Goddess Leonie, which is how she first started her business, and share just this downloaded, channeled kind of message, like this beautiful, deep wisdom that she just felt called to share with us. And she said it was messages from the angels. And seeing Leonie standing on stage, it was a very vulnerable kind of moment. And like she was crying and when she first started talking, it was just the most powerful I have ever seen her. And oh my gosh, I'm so, so glad she ended up having it like professionally recorded and um, she has shared it. So I'll share a link if you want to watch that in the show notes. But oh my goodness, it was just, oh, and she actually did say to me afterwards, she said, I don't think that there is another conference that I would have felt safe doing that, like, 
kind of thing and sharing that kind of presentation. And I feel so humbled and so honoured and so grateful that she felt comfortable to do that with our community, right? Like with that room of people. And I'm just so grateful that she did. Um, Then on the other end, that night, we had a sexy dance off between three conference attendees who were all dancing to Pony by Junior Wine and doing like sexy chair dances. And oh my gosh, also like just totally made my night. And I just, I just the contrast between those two different events, but both of them being perfectly reasonable to expect at the Heart Centre Business Conference, it just makes me feel so happy. And it was just so much fun. The dancing on the final night was just an absolute highlight for me. Um, Tina Tower, in her presentation, she gave us all a free digital gift. And I won't say too much about it because I don't want to create too much FOMO. But the look on people's faces, I saw people making eye contact with each other going, what did she just say? And the squeals of delight that we heard around the room when Tina said that she was going to gift this digital thing to all of us in the conference room, that just made my um, whole body go into like goosebumps and I was so excited. And even I was like, oh my gosh, like that is so cool. I was so excited to go and grab it as well. Um, So that was another big one. And it just one of those moments where you're like, oh my gosh, this is so fun. Um, My niece, Charlotte, actually came to conference a couple of times. She came to help out. We had an exhibition stall on the second night. Uh, where I was selling some of my um, books and I was selling candles and all sorts of different things. Um, And so she came to help out with that. But she came the day before as well. And um, she just so happened to be there during Emma Vega Malta's art journaling session. And Charlotte and I sitting side by side, creating these art journaling pieces together um, and listening to Emma talk about creativity and watching Charlotte's eyes light up. Like, is this what being a businesswoman can be like? Because Charlotte is a first year uni student. It just made me so happy and so giggly and like that makes me feel so much sense of purpose for what we're doing. We are changing what it looks like and feels like and what assumptions people make about what it means to be a business owner and um, seeing that through Charlotte's eyes was just so powerful. Um, For the first time ever, the conference team chilled together in our villa in the afternoon breaks. And that comes down to, number one, how amazing the team are and how organised they were. Number two, how brilliantly Grace did at making sure everything was taken care of for conference and all of the logistics. Um, But also, number three, we like said that that was on our wish list for something we wanted to do together was actually like go back to our villa and chill and hang out there because we have um, a villa together for conference each year and we commented last year like we hardly set foot in that villa other than to just sleep and it didn't feel like we got to experience and enjoy the villa itself and so that was really lovely that we got to do that this year. Um, both Pitchfest winners rocked their presentations and I felt so proud of myself because um, I made the decision this year. Normally we put it out to a vote for Pitchfest to see like uh, out of the attendees, you know, who we make people make little videos and then um, the the actual conference audience picks who they want to hear from for Pitchfest. But this year I just decided to pick the winners because in reviewing the pitches for who wanted to speak at conference, Lisa Tuig and Emma Vega Malta's pitches just stood out so spectacularly. And I was really, really excited to, I wanted to sit through those two workshops. And so I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to pick the winners and I'm going to announce the winners. And um, I was so, so, so grateful to pass Tash for deciding to just pick the winners and announce them and do that. And I was so, so grateful to Lisa and Emma because they both just nailed it. Like they absolutely did. Um, I... At my stall on the exhibition night, I decided to sell some pottery. Now, this has nothing to do with my core business, right? But you might have heard me talk before that last year I started pottery classes and I've started learning how to make pottery on a wheel, right? Wheel pottery. And our house was starting to fill up with these 
dinky little practice pottery pieces of mine, pencil holders, and um, they're all about the same size, really, little dishes and cups and bowls and and mostly, um, you know, just small pottery pieces. And I had said to Davey one day in the lead up to conference, maybe I should put my pottery pieces on out at the exhibition night and sell them. Like people would pay 20 bucks for a pen holder that I made, right? Like people would pay that, wouldn't they? And I was like, so sure no one would buy them because they're just practice pieces and um, they're they're beautifully flawed, right? They're perfectly imperfect. Um, And so I took, I think it was like nine or 10 pieces and had them on the stand and they sold out so quickly. Um, people were racing to try and purchase one of my pieces of pottery. And it was just so lovely. And then Emma Vega Malta, who is a like proper artist, she came up to me because she has like had an exhibition this year and stuff. Um, and she came up to me and she said, Do you know like how many people would be like wish that they could say that their first ever exhibition was a complete sellout. Like, you've sold out. I was like, oh, my gosh, I do need to, like, stop and celebrate that moment. It was just so funny. And, like, it was a teeny tiny amount of money. I think it was, like, I made uh, maybe $300 in sales, which, by the way, buys me so much clay to make more pottery, and I'm so excited by that. And I would said on stage, I was like, I'm going to have some pottery pieces, and you're just funding my practice. So it takes a lot of failed pieces for me to make a good piece of pottery. And so please help fund my need to purchase lots more clay. And people have absolutely funded me for next year. So I will be making more and more pottery and I'm so excited. And I'll think about the people who purchased the pottery from me at this conference as I'm making new pieces. And I'm so excited. Um, so all some, like just some really spectacular things. There were tears, there were hugs, there was laughter, there was high fives. Um, there were so many people taking selfies together. There were people who had met at conference for the first time last year. And then this year they wanted to sit together because they had kept in touch with each other throughout the year. Oh, just things that made me a little bit teary all the time. Um, and then one big tough thing happened. And that is at the implementation day, which is an extra day at the end of conference. So um, we have the gala dinner is on the Tuesday night. Then main conference is Wednesday day and night. We have an evening session. And then Thursday, a day session and an evening session. And then on the Friday, people who've purchased the implementation upgrade get an extra day. And that day is facilitated by me. And we had our morning session for um, getting to know each other. And then we split up into four groups and I'd sent people off with little missions. And then we were supposed to be coming back and sitting around the table for lunch. And my back seized up like massive spasm in my back. I tried to stretch it out. I tried to lie down. I couldn't physically sit to eat my lunch. I was standing, trying to get up the courage to try and sit down. And I was in so much pain, so, so, so much pain. And so um, literally halfway through the implementation day, I was out. Like I went back into the implementation day room. Everyone was out at the restaurant eating their lunch, lay down on the floor. Um, Someone gave me some lovely like magnet massagey things, tried to massage it out. That didn't work. I had some um, uh, over-the-counter medication, pain medication, didn't do, didn't even take the edge off. I tried to do some very basic stretches to try and get some movement, nothing. This has only ever happened to me once before, and it was when I was in Queenstown in New Zealand, and I ended up like having to go to the doctor um, and – like ended up on some really hardcore like pain medication and muscle relaxants and all sorts of stuff. And it was sort of exactly the same type of situation. My back had seized up. Now, number one, I think the main cause of that was the room was super, super cold when we first got in there in the morning. And I asked them to put the temperature up several times. And even after they'd put it up like three or four times, it was still really, really cold. And I think that I had a really cold draft on my back. Um, and then, yeah, it just, it just decided, nope, I am done. So I ended up sending a message to some of my friends who were attending conference and saying, does anyone have any more, um, stronger pain medication or anything? Because I am on the floor and I cannot get up. 
and Kerry Rowett came running into the room. (laughs) And I thought she came running into the room because she had strong pain medication. She came running into the room to do Reiki on me and I burst into tears. I have never felt so supported and loved and looked after in my entire life. Oh my gosh, I, you have no idea. Um, anyway, Kerry Rowett, Claire Wood, and Leonie Dawson, three of the conference speakers, were in that little group chat and they came in and they took over. Kerry worked on me for 20 to 30 minutes, I think, until I could actually stand up so that I could shuffle back to my room to go and lie down. And then the three of them ended up taking over and hosting the rest of the implementation day for me. Um, And I... I am so, so, so grateful to them for doing that. Not only did they do that, they actually took the time, as Kerry was working on me, she was taking the time between her and Leonie, they were asking me questions about what were the intentions for the implementation day, um, who was in the room, what did they need? Like they were so focused on making sure the implementation day was still super duper valuable for the attendees, not just like, oh, we'll just be some entertaining gap filler. Like they were taking like this deep sense of responsibility for ensuring that it delivered. Like, oh my gosh, like it makes me teary just even thinking about it. Anyway, so for 10 or so days after conference, I was deeply medicated and basically flat on my back, like couldn't move. Um, It was a really, really big spasm in my back. And to have been rescued by Kerry and Claire and Leonie in such a loving and kind and supportive way was just deeply profound for me. So they are some of the things that happened at the Heart Centre Business Conference. But what I also wanted to share with you in this episode are some of the lessons that I personally learned or things that I took away from the Heart Centre Business Conference as well. So the first one is that, and this might sound really self-involved, but I am really good at business strategy and marketing. (laughs) And I don't know why I feel like I've only just learned this in a really grounded and embodied way at conference this year, because I've been running my business for over 10 years, right? But I ran a workshop about um, marketing and messaging in an economic contraction. And afterwards, um, several people came up to me and said, that was so insightful. I have had this like weird feeling about my marketing or I've realized exactly what I'm doing wrong and why things aren't landing right now. And I was assuming it's because everyone has no money, but it's because I'm not being strategic with the way that I message a market in an economic contraction. And then Denise Stafford Thomas came up to me and she said, I learned more from that workshop than in my entire marketing degree. You are so genius at marketing and strategy. And I don't know, it was something about just the way that she said it. And then she said it on stage again. And then that night I like had this like huge sobby meltdown to Davey about the fact that Denise said that on stage. Um, But it, you know, I've just reminded me how much like sometimes even when you're in the thick of delivering and you, you know it, like I knew it, I knew that I was good at this stuff. But sometimes you do need to hear someone actually reflect back to you how helpful something was or how well something landed. And it's just really given me a kick in the pants to get back into sharing more consistently and creating content more consistently and remembering that this is my zone of genius. And, you know, sometimes we just need a little reminder. Yes, this is your zone of genius. And um, that was a really huge takeaway for me. And I I know it sounds silly saying it out loud, but I'm really good at business. (laughs) Anyway, number two, I have amazing friends and I am so, so grateful to all of my beautiful friends. But I wasn't leaning in and accepting the depths of friendship that I had access to. And I think part of that is because I've had some significant challenges ever since my surgery in 2021. And a quick, super quick recap for those of you who aren't aware of what happened or you haven't been around that long. In 2021, I had an explant surgery. I had one breast implant just on one side as part of a reconstructive process 
many years ago and that was slowly killing me. And um, so I had that out in 2021 and then it didn't heal. And so I actually had an open wound on my chest for eight months and for eight months could not work more than five to six hours a week in my business. Like I was unwell. Then in all of 2022 and most of 2023, I was detoxing and rebuilding my liver function. Um, I was detoxing from heavy metal poisoning. I was like rebuilding the baseline functions of my body because like I was like a one out of 10 in terms of energy, health, well-being, um, stamina, flexibility. I had 10 out of 10 inflammation. My liver function was getting dangerously low. Like I was not in a good place. And because that has been such a stretched out and extended period of time, and I'm someone who is uncomfortable with receiving, um, and I will be very upfront and open and honest about that. I felt like I was the needy, needy friend all of the time. And so because of that, I had come to stop leaning in. There's only so long that you can tell people you're not in a good way before you start to feel like you're just always bringing the mood down or you're always complaining about something or something is always wrong. And so um, I have friends that I've been friends with through all of that. I've had friends that I've made, new friends that I've made in that time since then. And I realized that I was keeping those friendships very surface level because I didn't want anyone else to have to hold space for me because I had no idea how long it was going to take for me to start to feel better again. And I didn't want to be the needy, needy friend who couldn't be giving in return and who my friends didn't feel like they could be vulnerable and show up and tell me what's wrong with them going on because my situation always felt like it was so bad and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that was a huge insight for me. And um, I feel like there's a lot of work for me to do on like leaning into friendship again and feeling comfortable with being vulnerable and being open and honest about how bad things are when they are bad and how I'm really feeling and what's going on for me. I definitely am now feeling so much more resilient from a health and well-being perspective. I mean, I've got some heart stuff going on at the moment, but that's hopefully all going to resolve fairly quickly. And um, because of what happened at conference and having that beautiful rescue from Leonie and Claire and Kerry, but even just some of the other conversations that I had with friends at conference, um, I realized like I have these amazing friends. I have this amazing like support network around me and I was keeping everyone at arm's length or keeping it very surface level because I was afraid that I was going to be the needy, needy friend for far too long. And that's going to change. So it's already started changing. Um, I am now working with Kerry Rowett on a very regular basis to work through a lot of what came up from the back injury, from that sense of, oh my gosh, like how life altering some of the messages from conference were, but also that recognition that I need some energetic restabilization and reconnection after what has been a fraught four years now, right? So um, yeah, there's just a lot, a lot that needs to be processed and cleared and some resilience and strength brought back at the energetic level, let's say. Um, Lesson number three, now this is a, this is a bit of a weird one, but I accept that some people will come to conference once and they won't get it. They won't see just how valuable and amazing and spectacular that conference is. And that's really hard for me to accept because I feel like once people are in the room, they like, everyone would fall in, like, how could you not fall in love with this experience and want to come back every single year? If I found a conference like this, I'd be going every single time. But different people value different things and different people see different things as being valuable. Um, when I review the feedback forms from conference, I have to be very mindful that like one person 
for example, saying, oh, I feel like everyone else is friends with each other and I didn't know enough people to be part of that, right, doesn't mean that all of conference should be scrapped because that one person felt like they didn't have enough opportunity to connect and make new friends. Yes, we are going to incorporate a little bit more structure to the way that we help people meet each other, but both before and during conference. Like we already do a very good job of let's get to know each other before conference. We have the conference attendees group. Like we do a lot of stuff to facilitate that. But also we will, and we also have allocated seating for just two out of the, two of the sessions so that we're mixing up who's sitting where and therefore almost like forcing people to meet new people and not always just sit with their friends and, you know, that kind of thing. But um, also for some people, they won't see sitting, listening to a, a business mentor talk about a very foundational and basic strategy when they are an established business owner, they won't see that as valuable. There are some people who go to conferences and events or listen to speakers through the lens of, okay, what am I going to get from this? And there are some people who listen to conference speakers and events through the lens of, oh, I wonder if like, what, what might be the new thing that I'm going to get from this, right? Like some people hear a message they've heard before and they instantly shut down like, well, I've already heard that. That's nothing new. And some people hear a message they've heard before and they're like, oh, what's something new I can learn from this same message? And the second group of people is the group of people who come back year after year. It's the second group of people who come back. And, you know, there's no difference in that mindset between multi-million dollar a year business owners who come back year after year and newbies who come for their first ever conference and they've only just started their business and then they decide to come back year after year. And so I accept that some people won't see conferences as valuable as the way that I do and that some people won't be satisfied with the like content or things, parts of conference. And not everyone has to love this kind of conference for this kind of conference to exist because this kind of conference is the kind of conference I want. It's the kind of conference that I think should exist. Yes. Um, Number four, um, this event conference is a bigger asset for my business than I often give it credit for. You may notice that I hardly ever talk about conference other than in the very lead up to conference and straight after conference. And at the moment, like in the past few years, that's been because it sells out and I don't have to talk about conference to sell tickets. It sells out on its own now. And I just need to mention it here and there. And we sell five or six tickets every time I talk about it. And um, like even during conference itself, I think we sold 50 tickets to next year. So, um, and there's only 125 spots for ticket holders to fill the room. Um, So there's, it's, I don't talk about it as much as I probably should or could because I don't need to, to sell the tickets. But that's part of the reason why I'm doing these episodes of the podcast is because like people don't need to come to conference to learn from it, but also talking about conference more consistently and learning to talk about conference without making it feel like I'm creating this FOMO and trying to make people feel like they need to be in the room. It's going to take practice for me, I think. Like that's part of the reason why I don't talk about conference much is because I feel bad talking about it because then what if someone listens to me talk about it and then they want to come, but then they can't buy a ticket because it's sold out and then I've made them feel bad and oh, all of this emotional stuff. But um, the fact that I organize this conference, I host it, I pick the speakers to be on stage, like that is a big asset for my business. I'm creating a stage for myself as well. Um, and so I am going to talk about conference more consistently in ways that are going to be helpful to everyone, regardless of whether they're coming or not. But I'm going to talk about it more consistently because it is an asset for me and I'm not necessarily um, uh, reaping the rewards of that asset beyond just running conference and the financial profit that it makes. Um, Lesson number five, 
I need to be in the room. Um, So this year's conference was the first time that I was in the room the whole time. And it was spectacular and so much better. And I like that means the logistics and the actual hosting of conference and all of that kind of stuff. I need to rely on my team more. And yep. And they did that so spectacularly this, this year. We'll have extra team members next year as well. Um, but like I need to be in the room too because every speaker, even though like I've heard Denise Duffield Thomas speak on stage probably 15 times in my life now since I started my business. And I have listened to all of her audiobooks more than four times each. I have attended most of her money boot camp calls since I joined. I have done her boot camp probably 12 times since 2012. Um, I still learned more and had more insights listening to her on stage this year at conference. And so, like, I love that I've created an event that, I'm getting so much value out of just from being an attendee as well. But also in being in the room and being more present in the room, I just had more conversations this year compared to previous years. And every year it's really challenging because I wish I could talk to every single person. And I do say in the attendees group before conference each year, like, please come up and say hello to me. Don't feel like you can't talk to me at all. Um, Like just I'm probably like running from thing to thing. And if I just have to give you a quick hug and take a selfie and then move on, that's fine. Um, But I do, I would rather you come and do that than not. Um, And I um, also made a special um, effort this year to go out and have morning tea with everyone at the morning tea break. Go out and have lunch and try and find new people to sit with to have lunch with at the lunch break. Go out in the afternoon to break. I went out and actually mingled between sessions and and I was there during each of the speaker sessions. It's really interesting though. Um, we only have two sessions where we have allocated seating and then people are able to sit wherever it is that they want. And when we do that, I often end up on my own at my table, I sit at the front left of the room and there are seven seats at that table. But even on the second night, it was just Grace and I sitting there for the first 15 minutes. And we ended up like asking people to come and sit with us so that we weren't sitting on our own. And so, yeah, I think um, just remembering to be in the room and Uh, We'll also have some extra ways to encourage people to come and say hello or sit with me or spend some time together. Because even though I did put in a lot of effort to try and talk to as many different people as I could at conference, I could still list off now 10, 15, maybe even 20 names of people that I didn't get to speak to or I only got to speak to for a very short period of time and I wish I got a chance to have a slightly longer conversation with them or at least get a selfie together or at least, you know, get another opportunity to have a quick chat with them as well. So I'm definitely going to be creating more space for that for myself for following conferences. I think a lesson that I'd love to pass on for that is that I also have gone to other people's events and been the person who felt like, oh, I can't go and say hello to the speakers because they're busy or they're sitting with their friends or um, I end up, even though I'm an extrovert, not going and talking to the people that I wanted to go and say hello to. And so I would just say, be brave and go up and say hello. Like sometimes you need to be okay with the person saying, I'm so sorry, I can't talk right now. I've just got to run off and do X. But that's a better answer to get and like have tried than to not have gone and said hello at all. So I would encourage you if you do go to events, if you do come to the Heart Centre Business Conference, please, please, please do come and say hello to me, of course. But also um, people said to me in lunch breaks or in the afternoon tea break, like, oh, I really want to go and have a chat to XYZ person. And I had said probably a hundred times throughout conference to someone go and talk to them. Just go and say hello. Just go and ask for a selfie. Go and talk to them. They are all amazing because I I don't hang out with people who are rude, like honestly. Everyone's lovely. Um, Okay. 
One other lesson that I wanted to share is I need to lean into the learn your own way model even further and role model that even further. That was a huge piece of feedback from conference. We have a feedback form that people can fill in and um, give us positive and negative feedback, things that they want to see done again or done differently. And so many people in their feedback form said that it was the first time they were at a conference that actually supported them in their own learning style. People appreciated. We had um, arts and craft supplies on the tables. We had uh, an encouragement at the start of each day to remind people, learn your own way. We encouraged people to sit on the floor, to go and stand by the walls, to get up and stretch, to go and sit outside. We actually had the conference sound streamed out to the lounges outside, but just quietly. So if people were feeling a little overstimulated um, and they wanted to go and sit outside and listen to the speakers rather than sitting and watching, they could. Um We had people even like tucking themselves under the side tables and like making themselves a little fort. Um, We had people wearing headphones. We had people um, with little blankies. Like we really encouraged people to show up to the event to learn the way that worked best for them. And it was definitely appreciated and noticed by attendees. And that's something we're going to lean into even more. We started that at virtual conference because a lot of people say they can't learn at a virtual conference. They can't sit and learn at a virtual conference. And the way that I run the Heart Centered Virtual Business Conference is not like any other virtual event you've ever attended. And I would encourage you, even if you are someone who's like, I definitely can't learn at a virtual conference give our virtual conference a go because um, it, I'm very mindful of the different learning styles that people have and creating a learning environment that works for people who have different learning styles. And um, we, I think we do it really well for virtual conference compared to any other virtual event I've ever been to. And I'm going to lean into that even further not just with in-person conference, but virtual conference, running my webinars and all of the ways that I facilitate learning in my business, actually. Uh, I've got two more lessons to share with you. The next one, number nine, is we need spaces to talk more like this. And by we, I mean business owners, marginalized business owners, um, people who are normally sitting on their own, working on their business or only talking to their team or only talking to their clients or only talking on their group calls. Like there's so much that we need to process through talking as a human. And the combination of being a business owner, living in a post-pandemic world, the move for everything to be online our obsession with our phones and doom scrolling. I think just the combination of what is happening right now and the environment that we are in right now, and then add on top of that, the isolation of being a business owner. What I realize is we just need to get together more often and just talk for the sake of talking. I am going to restart the meetups that we had here on the Sunshine Coast. I'm going to attend more events, but also I'm just going to organize like crafting days. And I've already organized with a biz friend, like a friendship bracelet making day. We're both Swifties and her kids are Swifties. Um, And like just little things like that, just random opportunities to sit and talk to other humans and be in circle with other humans or connect with other humans. I think it's really, really powerful. Um, In the second afternoon, in the break, because we have a big two hour to two and a half hour break between the afternoon session and the evening session. So everyone can kind of go and de-stress or go and hang out with friends or just chill. Some people had little parties, whatever they wanted to do. Um, A group of friends and I had a little cacao ceremony And the conversations that we had in that tiny little window were so soul fulfilling and so life affirming and so fun. And I laughed, I had tears streaming down my face. I just, 
And I just recognized and realized over and over again at conference, we just need this more often. So many people on the morning of the implementation day over breakfast, like everyone was there pretty much at the breakfast. There was so many people there at breakfast and everyone was talking to everyone. And I sat at four different tables for breakfast on that Friday. And so many people were just saying, like, I would come to this conference again if it was on next week because I just need this. Like I need this in my life so often. But it's not just the being in the big conference room that we need. Like for so many of us, we were talking about how we just need to sit at a table of four people eating food and talking. We just need to have a little impromptu cacao ceremony of eight of us and sit around talking. We just need to have a random group of six people sitting on a couch together, waiting for something, talking, right? Like we just need to sit around and make an art project together and be talking and I am going to try and facilitate as many of those and participate in as many of those as I can over the next year because I just recognize how much I need it. But I want to say we all need it. Yeah, we all need that so much. And then number 10, big lesson for me is to trust the timing and trust that little nudge. Over and over again, I was reminded at conference of things that were tiny, tiny, tiny little butterfly wing flaps that turned into a massive wave of change that culminated at conference. Like even the fact that I created this conference is because I had a little nudge to buy a ticket to another conference back in 2014 and I probably wasn't making enough money in my business to justify it at the time, but I just knew I needed to go to a conference and so I went And going to that conference created some friendships and built a network. And then I saw that two of the people that I'd met at that conference were going to another conference about six months later. And so I booked a ticket to that conference. And then I went to that same conference the following year. And it was a conversation that it was had with an old, old friend of mine and some new friends that I made at that conference that planted the seed that maybe I could run a slightly different conference or a Uh, speak to a different part of the market. And then I still delayed another two years before I finally had the guts to run my own conference. But like all those little times that I said yes, or followed a tiny nudge, or someone else followed a tiny nudge, led to huge changes and amazing results. So I want to tell you a couple of little stories of things that happened at conference or stories that I heard at conference that are the saying yes to the tiny little nudge. So someone came up to me in lunch, at lunchtime on the second day of conference and she said, I just sold a $5,000 VIP package to someone sitting at the table with me this morning. And I was like, amazing. That is so cool. Like, tell me what happened. And she said, well, I won't say too much about what's going on, but I just want to say, I saw that one of the speakers was coming to your conference and I didn't know they were coming to speak at your conference. I just saw that they were coming to your conference and I just had like a little pang of jealousy And I told my husband that I was really jealous that this person was going to your conference. And he said, well, why don't you go as well? And I didn't let him rethink saying that. I booked my ticket straight away. And now I'm sitting here at lunch, having just been paid, like they paid me over lunch, $5,000 to work with me over the next six months as a VIP. And I can't believe that that all happened because... I had a pang of jealousy about someone coming to your conference and I followed that nudge and I expressed it out loud. So that just gave me goosebumps all over my body. Another one was um, someone shared with me that in the pre-conference threads, so we have um, an attendees group and in the attendees group, well before conference, we start saying, let's all follow each other on Instagram. Like, tell us a bit about your business or we'll follow each other on Facebook. And um, who's first time is coming to conference? What are you worried about? Um, we do threads where it's like, who, how many conferences have you been to? And if you've been to conference more than once, what's your advice to someone who's coming for the first time? So like, we're really trying to connect with people with each other. And someone told me that in the conversations in the pre-conference 
group chats. They followed someone on Instagram. This is a little bit of a long-winded story, but they followed someone on Instagram who was coming to conference. And then that person who was coming to conference shared something about another service provider that provided a specialized like virtual assistant service. So the person who was coming to conference shared someone else who was a client of theirs had this like virtual assistant service. They hired a virtual assistant through that person. And because of what that virtual assistant had done for her, which cost her about $500 before she came to conference, she was able to pay for her flights her accommodation and her 2025 conference ticket with the sales that came from the actions that that virtual assistant took for her. And so she had done the math on it that by buying a ticket to conference and finding out about that virtual assistant through another conference attendee well before conference, in arriving at conference, the return on investment from hiring that virtual assistant was enough to pay for her flights, accommodation, and another ticket to conference of 2025. And I just loved that story, right? You've just got to trust sometimes there's a little nudge, there's a little trust the timing. And then the final one was someone after conference uh, shared with me in one of our um, conversations, like a private message conversation, she shared with me that she was really scared to go and talk to one of the speakers at conference. And so afterwards, she sent them a DM and said, hey, I really wanted to talk to you at conference, but I got a little bit shy. So I just wanted to send you a DM and say, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, This is the work that I do. And so I really resonated with what you shared. And I'm really uh, excited to learn more about what you do and follow what you're doing. And the speaker actually replied and said, oh, I've been looking for someone to do that for me. Can you send me some information about what you do? And so now one of our speakers is her client. And I was just like, oh my gosh, it's so cool. These little stories, these little nudges, right? So if you did go to conference and there was someone you wanted to talk to and you didn't feel brave enough, send them a little DM and just say, hey, I wasn't brave enough to talk to you at conference, but I just wanted to reach out and say hello. Um, But also like sometimes you just have to take that little leap, that follow that little nudge. Now I'm not saying like all of these nudges relate to conference, right? I'm not saying, oh, everyone should come to conference because number one, we don't have enough spots in the room for everyone to come to conference, but it doesn't have to involve a conference. But I bet you can think of little nudges like that, that you've had before that you've ignored or little nudges like that, that you've had before and you've followed them. And it has ended up creating a ripple, which then creates a wave, which then just creates so much, so much change for you and a huge, amazing result. That is definitely true for me. And the more I learn to tune into and trust those little nudges, the more I can see that they are my intuition or they are my angels or they are just my inner wisdom or whatever it is that you want to call it. That is my fate. That is there's something there. And that voice is never one that speaks out of fear or worry or um, anger or frustration. That little nudge is always the one that is like that tiny little quiet whisper. But when you listen to that tiny little quiet whisper, you know in your heart that it's right and that it's true. That's how I would describe intuition for me. Anyway, that is my final lesson from Heart Center Business Conference 2024. I hope that you've got some value out of listening to me talk about all of this. If you would like to grab the show notes for today's episode, I will link to any of the um, the products or the um resources that I've mentioned that are available with the show notes of today's episode at tashcorbin.com forward slash 419, because this is episode number 419. I will also pop a link to both virtual conference, which is in March next year, and Heart Center Business Conference Noosa, which is in September next year, um, so that you can go and check it out if you'd like to come and join us in the virtual room for 2025 or in person in Noosa in September in 2025. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the Heart Centered Business Podcast. And until next time, I cannot wait to see you shine. Bye for now.